episode 41. Today, we'll be discussing Secrets of a Summer Night by Lisa Kleypas. It is the first in her Wallflowers book series of, well, seasons. Hi, Ray. Hi. How are you? I can't complain. Not that anyone wants to hear me. I mean, I could complain, but yeah, I think not. Ha- I think anybody could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kinda... I, could, I could complain. It's week, I think, um, 12 of being at home. <laughs> Yikes. Same, actually. It's well, maybe week 11 for me, but I think we went on lockdown pretty closely to when y'all did yeah and um, my kids haven't been in school and now we're out for summer and um they're going insane i i knew when i went to college that i did not want to be an elementary teacher for reasons capital r reasons And so I didn't do the coursework to become an elementary school teacher. Eventually I did the coursework to become a high school teacher and high school teachers teach ages 14, 15 and up. And uh, now of course I teach college at no point did I ever think that I would ever be equipped to teach anyone younger than age 14 and at no point do I think that now but you're doing it anyway not really no Mm -mm. Mm -mm. no I'm not I'm not Mm -mm. just trying to keep them alive and uh and uh relatively unharmed hang on is this keeping them alive include you shutting yourself away in a closet I hesitate to make discussions like that. I mean, it just really (laughs) seems just, you know, let's not even, you know, I I may or may not have been drinking more in those last 12 weeks than I have in two years, but that is really beside the point, isn't it? I mean, come on. Seriously, you're, you're not the only one. I think I, I very rarely drink because living alone, it's not the most sensible thing to do. And I have probably gone through way more wine and vodka since shut down than I've gone through in the previous three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there's silence mm-hmm. at that one. Uh, <laughs> it's not great. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I mean, lockdown is kind of easing over here. Um, you can gather in groups of six from up to two households which is fine until you realize that the other household you want to gather with already has six people in it. Hmm. And it doesn't work. We've eased off on a lot of restrictions and shockingly, shockingly, (laughs) our COVID numbers are now record numbers every day. We have record numbers of new cases every day, but we're going to leave the economy open and, you know, y'all should social distance and keep your space from each other, but we're not going to do anything to help make certain that that happens. That's basically what's being said to us. That's you should always stay at home unless you absolutely have to leave, but we're going to have all the stores open. You can do whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Sure. Jan, that's that. So my state is experiencing record numbers of increases every single day. It's perfect that's that's the thing i think um last at one point last week we had more cases in the uk and no not more cases more deaths in the uk than they had in the entirety of the rest of europe (laughs) that's not good i mean our cases admittedly they dropped into double digits this week Mm -hmm. but it's taken 13 weeks And with everything going on and lots more people going out and um, my sister went to the beach locally last week with my youngest nephew and Mm -hmm. she said that there were probably about 90, maybe 100 people definitely not exercising, social distancing, sitting on the green in front of the beach 
And then when she went down there the next day, there was broken glass everywhere and everything else. So it was great. Um, so they're really practicing social distancing. So I can imagine that our figures aren't going to stay down for that much longer. No, we've had, we've had uh, Memorial Day, which is traditionally a very uh, social intensive holiday here in the States. And with that two week incubation period where we've, we've really hit that. And so we're starting to see, you know, uh, lots of increases. And then we've had um, numerous protests and whatnot, and people have been practicing social distancing or wearing masks to varying degrees at some of these protests. So I really think that we're going to continue to see increases and we're going to continue to see many more deaths because people are, are choosing to do other things rather than, than, sort of stay safe at home but yeah anyway um that's, yeah, well, I've that's only, our I've new only, reality yeah i've been out of the house twice in six weeks wow yeah no i i've been yeah i i go out more than that and um quite a bit more than that i've actually eaten at a restaurant but we went and sat outside mm -hmm. <laughs> with a lot of distance between us and other people and i've i'm pretty good about wearing a mask i really I mean, that's the thing there is, if you say that, that, I mean, the thing is here at the moment, there isn't actually anywhere really to go mm. because that's the thing. our pubs you are closed, go. our yeah. restaurants are closed. I think um, some of the Costas and Starbucks may be opening, but mm. not where I live. <laughs> so there isn't actually anywhere to go unless I want to go to the chemist, which is where I went on Saturday. Um, to pick up all my medication, dear God, the bag was huge, um, or to the supermarket to pick up milk. And that's pretty much my out that they are pretty much my only outings, outings yeah. <laughs> because the gym yeah. is not open and it's just, Everything there's, there's nothing is open here. Everything's, Everything. everything's closed. Our cinemas, our restaurants, our coffee shops, our gyms are starting to provide outdoor classes with five to 10 students per class, but mm -hmm. that's it. Um, our part, obviously parks and things are open, but there isn't anywhere to actually do anything because it's just not. Yeah. Yeah. Which is well, the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Hello, okay, Netflix. Well, yeah. <laughs> Or you could read a book. So yes, let's, let's talk, talk about, about book. books. Right. This is Lisa Kleypas. Yeah. Secrets of a Summer Night. Now, I have not read a lot of Lisa Kleypas. Have you? This was the first one. I think it's the first one I've read by her, too. Like, she's always in my to-be-read pile, and I just have never quite gotten to Well, that's the thing. She's, she's always been in my... Every time I go on Goodreads, she is... Somebody has recommended one of her books to me or they are, you've read this, so you might like this when I go on Amazon and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they're always there, mm -hmm. but I've never picked one up and it's, yeah. she's not an author. <laughs> and she's, she's, say hello, <laughs> say hello. Ladies and gentlemen, my husband just wandered in the room. Say hello, honey. Hi, Gunny. <laughs> We're recording a podcast. Oh, you didn't give me the wave off. Uh oh, I now I know. <laughs> We're recording a podcast. Here's the human element. This would be better. I'm sorry. No, I think that would be distracting. Oh, oh just checking. Yeah, sorry. Throw it out there. Yeah, I understand. Just an idea guy. Yeah, just, just the idea guy. All cool. Right. Cool. Yeah. All right, I'll leave it be. Okay. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. All right. All right. We'll see you later. Okay. Bye now. Option B. <laughs> Bye now. Charlie. Double. Lots. Lots of options. Uh. uh. <laughs> That's the funniest interruption uh. ever. Uh. Is it? Is it really though? It beats really? me having to. It beats me having to get up to clean up cat sick. Um, That's a heck of a thing for it to beat. <laughs>
guess. Okay, okay so yeah, I totally said Clypus. As I was no. as I was saying, she's always on my to be read list. And I've never yeah. quite gotten around to it. Same for you, is that right? Well, that's she's never been on my to be read. She's always been on my on the recommended. So I go on to buy something off Amazon or anything else, and it's always oh you've bought this, so you might like this, and they are always right, the books right, that come right. up. And the I mean the main reason sounds weird, but actually no, it's not. The reason we actually, or I actually picked this book was because we decided we were going to do, both of us, we picked a book each, um, decided that we were going to do something a little bit more raunchy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for this week because we've been reading, we did the classics, then we did... um, Another classic. Yeah, a classic. Then we did some more. We did the teen stuff because we did Clueless and yep. emma and all the other things so we've done very very um pg i g? suppose g g g clueless not emma? so much Glu- clueless emma not so much. is yeah emma it is but clueless not so much g and then i'll, I'll be view. honest a room with a view the book is definitely g yes and the movie is depending on if you got the cut version or not the movie is g but if you get the non-cut version then it's only a pg over here i mean yeah i mean i think it's a pg here i'm just not sure but it just gets a little like i mean i don't know anyway it it isn't really the book both of the books that we basically looked at were very very uh g or pg at the outside and and the truth of the matter is we needed to pick something that was a little written by a modern author. Neither yeah. of those authors are alive and they haven't been alive for over a hundred years. So, or a hundred years. So let's, well, okay. So Forrester died later, but you, you get the my point. I mean, these books are very old. So let's pick something that's newer, right? Yeah, At least exactly. from this century. Yes. So hence I looked for, I actually did my search was, and this is true, my search was erotic or very sexually <laughs> detailed historical novels. You 100% did not tell me that. That's what I searched <laughs> for. You did not tell me that. Well, that's what I searched for. Um, I think I kind of achieved it. Right. right. Kind of. <laughs> What is this? Why don't you give us a, a rundown of what this book is about? I can I really? Um, I don't actually have a physical copy of the book. Mine's all on Kindle, so Same. I am now going to have to find Same. the summary on Kindle if I can actually open it because I've just finished it. No joke. I started this book at six fifteen this morning. It is now. <laughs> quarter part it's in fact i started this book 12 hours ago exactly <laughs> so go me uh because <laughs> that's just the way Ray is a house. that is just the way i roll <laughs> <laughs> gotta record a podcast in 10 minutes i need to finish up the last 800 pages <laughs> no it was <laughs> i was at 97 percent at five oh, okay. o'clock okay that's i don't think that's too bad Okay, so now it's telling me what the second book is. I hate it when it does that. You know, you Mm -hmm. look at it and you think, right, I'm going to find out what this book's about. And I can't find it on my Kindle. (laughs) I am going to find out what this book is about. Because I am very, very, very resourceful. Well, I'm not. But that's neither here nor there. And if you can hear something, that's me typing because I am having to actually look this up. And this is from someone who read it less than an hour ago. That's Mm. saying a lot, isn't it? It's saying something. Mm. It's not saying anything very, very complimentary. The funny thing is this book actually has four stars out of five on Goodreads. Well, actually 4.05 stars out of five on Goodreads. Hmm, does it? Yes, it does. Oh, wait. The prologue answers a question that we had earlier. But anyway, keep on. Okay. 
So the summary of the book is four young ladies at the side of a ballroom make a pact to help each other find husbands no matter what it takes. Proud and beautiful Annabelle Payton could have her pick of suitors if only she had a dowry. Her family is on the brink of disaster and the only way Annabelle can save them is to marry a wealthy man. Unfortunately, her most persistent admirer is the brash Simon Hunt, a handsome and ambitious entrepreneur who wants her as his mistress. Annabelle is determined to resist Simon's wicked propositions, but she can't deny her attraction to the boldly seductive rogue any more than he can resist the challenge she represents. As they try to outmaneuver each other, which is represented in the, in the book by a game of chess, uh, they find themselves surrendering to a love more powerful than they could ever have imagined. But fate may have other plans and it will take all of Annabelle's courage to face a peril that could destroy everything she holds dear. I have a problem with the last bit of that bit, the last sentence okay. of that statement, but we will go into that later. Okay. Well, for our listeners, this, uh, Ray and I were talking before we started recording the podcast like, when is this thing set it's too late for this it seems too early for that blah 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 according to the prologue it's set london 1841 so it is post industrial or it's tag into the industrial revolution mm -hmm. in the british empire but it's actually before the industrial revolution in the united states but there but are references to industrialization industrialization in the, in the united states, states. like standardization of industrialization in the United States. Mm. And this is not, that's not historically accurate, which bothers me as an American historian, although you are starting getting to get into some of standardization of parts and stuff like that, but not the way that this book would imply. So yeah, this book implies a great deal of um, industrialization has been brought over from the States to the, to Britain in the form of in the form of fully formed railroads, railways and everything yeah, else it's, it's and this is at the time when the railways in the states are still made out of pig iron and the railway in the south is this patchwork of who knows what and it just it, it but that's it's fine it's fine if you can if you can ignore that and admittedly i should have been able to ignore it if you can ignore that or if it's not a problem for you it's not gonna be a problem for you I, but then I, this I, novel, man, I just, <laughs> Ray, why don't you talk first? Maybe I'll have something to say. You had plenty to say, I'm sure. Um, I think my, I, there were certain elements of the story that I liked. There were certain characters that I liked. Um, really who? I liked Evie. Oh, okay. So you liked some of the other wallflowers. Yes. I liked some of the other wallflowers and I liked Simon. Wait, so you didn't like Annabelle? Not really. I didn't like her either. I found her to be... <laughs> she She seemed to be very... Um, I mean, okay, towards the end of the book, she did start to realize that it wasn't all about... She started to question her mother's teachings. No, you do not bite that cable. Sorry, my cat's decided to eat my... my um, the wires attached to my computer um, today is the day for interruptions yes it certainly my is at, pets. Least, at least she hasn't started to meow <laughs> i just today my husband walks in decides to stop for like six minutes <laughs> <laughs> and make recommendations on to do how to do the podcast <laughs> jiminy cricket okay sorry uh, yeah okay but this so, just proves we're human. Um, yeah, something. Mm -hmm. But um, no, there was something about her that she's towards she's the end. Of it, yes, towards the end, she started to realise that perhaps her mother's teachings weren't necessarily the right way to go. But she did have, given her circumstances and her situation, she was quite up herself. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, she just, it, I liked her brother, Jeremy. Oh, he was sweet. He was sweet and not a snob. And I just, she was, she was a snob and it took for her forever to 
kind of get away from being a snob and it you took, know, I, I think it, I think it got it got to me when the other wallflowers are saying what are your reckon what what are your requirements and she's like up here it doesn't matter whichever one and I'm like yeah but then but she says he has to have a joke his, yeah but then he has to have his own teeth he has yeah. to he can't be upward of like 50 um yeah yeah I just it, it and I, I just I never she got better you're right she got better as the book went along and by yeah. the end she realizes she loves her husband but she's also and she really risks her life for him she fair. does risk her life for, i mean you know she she obviously loves the guy by the end of the book and as well she should because and he loves her um but i mean she's willing to do some pretty terrible like she's willing to to like trap kendall into marriage and I'm sitting here thinking, I mean, and she backs out of it, right? But, like, that's just not, that's, that is not a trope I was comfortable even thinking about. The thing is, the I thing guess, is, I think you have to look at it from the perspective of it actually did happen quite I, a lot. That's, yeah, that's, that's, I, I, that's the thing. I mean, I think there are certain elements of this book that are massively historically inaccurate. Mm -hmm. you can agree on that quite clearly i mean we were both mm -hmm. discussing before when is this based because the yeah. industrial revolution in the in great britain was 1760 to 1840 and the industrial revolution in the u.s was later mm -hmm. therefore yeah. why would it be that we were getting stuff from the u.s when they hadn't actually reached that point it was very baffling However, there are certain elements. Women did um, trick peers or men with influence into compromising situations so they could get their hand because men, are, <laughs> men in that era weren't actually keen on marriage unless they mm -hmm. had to mm -hmm. for their title. Mm hmm I just, yeah, I guess it's just such an underhanded thing to do. It's one thing for the trope to be, oh, you're in a compromising situation, you've been caught, and that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's one thing if, if it's not intended. It's another thing entirely where the heroine is actually plotting to entrap someone. It just makes me feel a way I don't like. It makes me not like her. And it makes me very unsympathetic to her. And then when she marries the industrialist, the entrepreneur, she's quite wealthy now. Her family doesn't have to worry about money anymore. And that's great. And in the United States, honestly, that's, except in the wake of the American Civil War, which is a completely like. Yes, the, forget the, about that bit. Yes. <laughs> but for the most part, you know, the color of your money determines your social standing in the United States because we don't have peerage and aristocracy and all that stuff here. Although we do have some quote unquote blue blood types, right? Did your, did your family get here before the revolution or whatever? But did they come over on the Mayflower? Well, something like 10% of the American populations do have ancestors on the Mayflower. I don't. Mine showed up at Jamestown earlier. We have peerage in our family, but <laughs> whatever here's me being the snob right here's <laughs> well my family came uh, in the second supply boat to jamestown no um uh, my family's got titles whoop yeah, it's not benefited me whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> if i had but, if i if it had benefited me at all i don't think i'd be sitting in my dining room in a pair of pjs right now <laughs> but well i might be but <laughs> um but you know, I, in the States, the blue bloodedness is a different kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. in, in the States, we don't have that kind of uh, sort of thought process, I guess, just generally speaking. No, but, but then that is something that is reflected with Lillian and Daisy. Mm -hmm. the, soap, I know. the soap prince, the soap heiresses who've got yes. loads and loads of money and aren't accepted. And that is the, it's, 
it's almost like they've they're in a very very similar situation to Simon. Right, and, and they've I got can't money. Help but just be like, but no breeding. Mm. Exactly. And so he's got money, but no breeding, and then She's she got has no money, but no breeding. money. Sorta, right? Mm. I mean, her brother's like we're like twigs on the tree we're like barely hanging on so like and then and then you know at the end when she's trying to visit her old friends and whatnot who've done nothing for her by the way yeah who ignored her when she was in the ballrooms and now they're talking crap about her when she's richer than they are and it's because i guess it's vulgar to be wealthy or to discuss wealth and for my american mind i'm just like you know i just the okay. term nouveau riche was created for people like them. Yes. But in part, he would, he would have married her in part to ensure that his kids had entree into a better, a quote unquote, better class of society than he could have provided, I would think. But I don't know. It just, it just... It's very it only it for would me. only that would only realistically work if she had a title, which she doesn't. Mm -hmm. She's probably at most a miss. Yeah, she was introduced as miss a lot. Yeah. She's a miss, which means her brother is a master. A Mr. Master, master he'd be a master first because he's mm. under the age of 16 um so they're probably it's kind of like um i suppose the best example is those who are members of the peerage without title so children but of they're second, not even children of a second son for yeah. example that's the thing that's the thing it's it's quite strange because we still have peerage we do mm -hmm. still have we still have a royal family we still have dukes and right. duchesses and lords and ladies and everything else over here yeah. but they don't hold the same sway right as they once they they are still i mean to a point they're still respected but when you can buy a title um it's not exactly the same thing um there are titles that are still obviously clearly respected like the queen mm -hmm. well okay so because we're, we're still a monarchy right right i understand okay so let's let's maybe look at this book from a okay so we've kind of like torn it apart, it apart. <laughs> yeah a couple of levels we didn't like the heroine which didn't help i think if we liked the heroine as a person maybe and we admittedly she gets better yeah but but we don't like her at the jump and I don't like her at the jump. And if I didn't have to have read this book for the podcast, I'd have closed it and not read. I wouldn't have finished it. Mm. So, um, per personally, Oh no, that's that I fine. Um, I am, um, <sighs> so what did we think about the reason why you chose this book? There was quite a lot of sex towards the end of the book. Yes. And he was quite creative. It wasn't yes. very, it wasn't um, under the covers with the lights out. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the way you say it. Um, <laughs> I'd say it was quite detailed. Yes. I'm agreeing with you on every level. Is there anything you can add? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, that's helpful. Um, I will say that while she hasn't created a heroine that either of us actually warmed to, she can write yeah. sex. She can. You're right. If you're looking for a book with heat, and you don't necessarily care if you like the characters. In a Kindle, skip Might. to about um, skip to about sixty seven percent of the book. I didn't know. I didn't know. If you read the first, if you read the prologue, you meet Annabelle, you meet Simon and her brother, and then you could probably safely skip. I mean, quite a bit of the book. I mean, yeah. if, you're, if you're just reading it for the heat, yeah. 
if you are just reading it for the heat, there's a certain scene in that meet that room where the musicians, when the musicians arrive mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they're hidden behind a curtain. Mm-hmm. That's quite, quite heated. And then after they get married, oh boy. <laughs> after they, I'm trying to think of a way to, after they get married, it's um, very, very detailed. And if I met a man with this kind of stammer, I think I'd be quite happy. I am <laughs> <laughs> being honest. Um, he's definitely, he introduces her to the bedroom arts and turns her from someone who's incredibly um, staid and... Repressed? Yes, into a nymphette. A nymphette. So, what we're saying is, this book has, especially towards the end, like the last third of the book, it is very, it it rates on the chili pepper scale. Oh, yeah. Fairly high on the chili pepper scale. Um, But it wasn't, I am not motivated to read the rest of the series. Are you motivated to read the rest of the series? I or no? I I actually bought the rest of the series because I have... I have book vouchers to spend, but I, I think my thing is, as I said earlier, I like the peripheral characters. I want to mm-hmm. find out what happens to Evie because her family's mm-hmm. horrible. Um, and I kind of want to find out what happens to Lillian because you know, you just have, it's so blatantly obvious who she's going to end up yes. with. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So um, blatantly yeah. obvious. She's going to get her title. Yes. Yes, she is. Which will probably help Annabelle. Yeah, but it's also the... There's also fire between those two. Mm -hmm. And I think he's quite a staid, sensible. She's rebellious. Right. Um, Can I ask you... I don't... The title didn't make sense to me. No, the title doesn't make sense to me either. I That's the one thing. I mean, I was reading it and I was thinking, well, secrets, what secrets? Because if they're talking right. about the fact that her mother was essentially allowing herself to be abused by one of her deceased husband's friends for money, then that's kind of not a secret. And then the event that occurs between her mother and this gentleman that is the term loosely. Yeah. That is very quickly glossed over. Oh, he's an acceptable member of society though. Cause he's got a title. Um, it's very loose. It's almost sort of like it happens. Then it's glossed over. Mm-hmm. It's never mentioned again. Um, yeah, we're going to destroy all evidence that we can of this. Simon's going to go threaten him. And then your mom's going to go away with my mom. Oh, and now they're super good friends. They're like attached at the hip, according to Even Jeremy, though, right? yeah, even, even though, though they have nothing in common. Nope, at all. Totally different class of people. His mother's a butcher's wife and she's the widow of someone who left them broke. So, I, okay, sure. I mean, unlikely friendship, but that word, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, okay, sure to that. But I'm just kind of looking at this and thinking, okay, fine. Um, I wouldn't, I have no idea that this is going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if somehow in one of these books, eventually Simon gets some minor title, like he's elevated to sir or something. You know what I mean? So that she kind of gets what she wants. Well, sir's so a knighthood. You understand what I'm saying? Like a baronet yeah. or something. I, it wouldn't surprise me. Like he does something sufficiently helpful to the crown that they give him some sort of teeny tiny title. It wouldn't surprise me. But I, no. I don't know that. But then at the same time, he's already, he's, he's not bothered. No, he's not, but. And I don't know if Annabelle will still be bothered. I don't know. 
because she can have her friends she's probably see that's the thing this see this is the thing that really annoyed me this statement here but fate may have other plans and it'll take all of annabelle's courage to face a peril that could destroy everything she holds dear um it happens in the last what 10 15 pages of the book um sort (laughs) of it's almost like this need there needed to be some action in there so they couldn't end it on a simple and they lived happily ever after they had right. to add this tiny little bit of unnecessary drama in well and it really it, was unnecessary but what it does f- happened or what it does do is it gives the earl a different opinion of her right and so then maybe it gives the earl a different See, opinion of never, her friends you never ever find out why exactly he doesn't like her right i mean i don't know well she said she threw herself at him when a couple of seasons back or something yeah but but that's 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 no justification to absolutely loathe somebody and he really does loathe her well maybe he loathes her because he loathes um fortune seekers i don't know but no it's, it's got one but you're right it's not a good enough reason and maybe it's a, it's it's a really it's a really random thing maybe it's explained in a later book i just didn't i, I but it should have been explained in this one you're right yes. so because there yeah. were certain elements of it you looked at and you thought well that's incomplete as i said i didn't pick this for the storyline i picked this because i literally searched for um sexually detailed historical romance and this one came up so that's the reason i picked it and i think i (laughs) i picked the right book for that particular reason but (laughs) but (laughs) we just wound up not liking the heroine very much and i don't know it just Maybe this isn't the right introduction to Clapus's books. Maybe there, maybe a different book would have been a better introduction for me. Maybe I would have, yeah. And maybe I would like some other. It's not that it was poorly written. It was not a poorly written book. I just never got behind Annabelle. And that's that's on me. Yeah, but then that's maybe that is a well. Yeah, but it's not only you that didn't like her. I didn't like her either. It was there was something about her that didn't ring true i think it was her arrogance Maybe. she was quite an un like she was too forceful but she wasn't i like my female characters to be something of an enigma mm-hmm. i like them to have depth mm-hmm. and she had none fair but that's, I mean, that's my view of it. So, Claypus, mm-hmm. continue writing the sex scenes because you're good at those. But please do <laughs> some, please do some more historical research. <laughs> yeah, maybe that would help too. Maybe that would help too. All right. Well, uh, for next time, I choose a book from an author who does not normally, um, she writes erotica. You said you wanted. You said you wanted more heat, so I. Chose doesn't she also? Doesn't she also write um, fantasy? Yes, I haven't read. I think quite a lot of her books are mm-hmm. werewolves fantasy, yeah. or shapeshifters or something. Yeah, but they're also erotica. They're all under that broad umbrella, even though you've got some that are supernatural and some that are not. Mm-hmm. So the book that I picked was by Sharice Sinclair called uh, Not a Hero in the Sons of the Survivalist series. And um, it's actually on sale at uh, a couple of outlets right now in ebook format. And so next time, that's what we'll be talking about. Ray, where can people find you? People can find me at All About Ray on twitter where i'm actually Mm -hmm. a little bit more active right now though most of it's about oh dear god when's the week over (laughs) (laughs) because um i mean the thing is working from home is great i love the fact that i can literally roll out of bed 
have a quick shower, clean my teeth, and then go and make a coffee and sit down at my dining table. Um, right. And then when five o'clock arrives, if work isn't too busy, I can log off and go and get my dinner. And I don't have mm. a 45 minute journey home. Right. However, it does mean that I work harder, a lot harder. And I'm sure that everyone else finds that too, that they're working probably they're doing twice as much work as they'd normally do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why mm. my, my Twitter is mostly, Oh my God, when's it Friday? Please say it's Friday mm -hmm. soon. Um, and occasionally pictures of my cat because she's <laughs> photogenic, even if she is a pain in the neck. And I'm trying to think where else you can find me. Oh, of course you can also find us at ISN romance on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And Obviously, our podcast, which is on Spotify, Podbean, iTunes, and a few other places that are all on our blog, which is romancenotdead.wordpress.com. I actually remembered it. Woohoo! Perfect. <laughs> if you want to find me, I come out of blue on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, and I mostly, well, I haven't said a whole lot recently, but anyway, <laughs> we would love to hear from you if you have suggestions or if you would like to chime in on our opinions of some of these books, we would be interested to hear your thoughts. And so Ray, how would you like to sign out? Keep on searching for your happily ever after. And I would remind you that romance isn't dead. It's alive and well on your bookshelf. Bye. Bye.